Welcome to the Mock Plugin Wizard XYZ tutorial part one. This series of tutorials will implement a XYZ demo plugin and then analyze uh, on probably a line by line basis the source code associated with that. In this first section, we'll actually create the plugin, demonstrate its use, and do a rapid overall view of all the modules, all the source code in the plugin. In the succeeding sections, we will uh, take each individual uh, source code file and analyze it probably on almost a line to line by line basis. Uh, just a note, uh, these tutorials are being done ad hoc. Um, I don't have a script, so if there's some ahs and pauses and thoughts or a little bit of stuttering, uh, please excuse me. This is our first pass. Of course, the first thing from your uh, mock plugin wizard tutorial for installation is once you've installed it, the only thing you need to do is start up your compiler. Uh, we'll start up Visual C Express. We still see our quick demo left from our previous tutorial. And we'll click on the New Project button. And we'll select the Mock Plugin Wizard. And we'll name this project XYZ Tutor. Now, I called it Tutor instead of Demo because sometimes in the future I'll show you files that are named demo having to do with the source code, but everything's named tutor having to do with the project name. Uh, one note, you'll notice that I put no space between the XYZ and the tutor. I found that although the uh, Visual Studio allows you to do that, uh, my use of the project name to also be some variables uh, causes the compiler to get sick. Uh, in a future release, I'll put a filter in to stop you from even creating a project with a space in it. So let's proceed. We'll proceed to the second set of screens. Everybody's familiar with those. We will just come down here and click Modeless XYZ Demo to add the demo code, and we'll click Finish. The uh, plugin wizard is creating the files, mangling them, and doing everything. And um, similar to the first time, let's just build this thing. And it will automatically build and install, hopefully compiling clean. And then we'll test it. OK, it's complete, successful. Let's minimize our compiler, start up Mach 3. Mach 3 is loading. Reset it. Config. Config plugins. We have a new plugin called XYZ Tutor, and it says author and the uh, version number. Uh, I'll show you later how to change that to your name and your version number. Uh, as before, if you click config, you get config doesn't live here anymore. Um, then if you enable the plugin, exit mock, start mock back up. You now, after resetting, have a plugin control Hi, and you have I'm the Ed XYZ Bryson of Joshua tutor. One Systems. This is the tutorial. The XYZ the tutor mock. will now bring up a uh, dialog box that allows you to control what the plugin does. You'll notice that display modeless is unchecked. That's why there's no screen floating around here on top. And the X row, Y row, and Z row are set to be visible. I'm going to tell it to display the modeless. Say OK. And now there is a modeless uh, dialog box up on the screen that will parrot. Uh, I'm going to use my up arrow key to move the uh, Y axis. And you'll see that it parrots anything that's in the uh, Y row and shows it here in the box on the screen. You can minimize this. It'll live down at the bottom. Uh, you can show it on Vista as just a pop-up. Um, you can right click it and maximize it. You can do whatever you would normally do with um, with a dialog box or whatever. If you close it, 
it will disappear and you would have to go back up to plug-in control to bring it back up. It recalls the last state, which is that it has been closed. You can also, besides turning it on, turn off the Y and Z or whatever DRO you want, and you'll get just the DROs that are there. Again, a very simple application. I'm not saying it's a great plug-in. Uh, Scott Schaefer has done a, a, a larger, uh, more robust version called um, Mock Mad that uh, will let you select what DROs you want to see and monitor LEDs and all those type of things and this was not meant as a replacement of that just a, a quick simple demo. Uh, let's close this and close mock and we'll get back to being programmers. Uh, I'm going to bring the compiler back up and I'm going to fly out the Solution Explorer and we're going to real quick cover each of these files just to give you a little verbal rundown. I'll cover them in alphabetical order and then in our next series of tutorials we'll actually cover them in what I consider logical order. Um, we'll look at each one real quick as we go through. Config dialog is the dialog, our, our win form actually, for the little config box that says, you know, configs don't live here anymore. The thing on .NET programming in C++ is that your H's contain your code and your CPPs are, uh, are kind of uh, by the wayside for things like Windows Forms and things like that. Uh, if you progress into C Sharp, you'll see that we pretty well do everything in, in CS files and don't use H's at all. Uh, I'll double click on this and it will bring up a uh, uh, a wizard or an on-screen uh, editor that lets me uh, see the dialog, uh, edit it. Uh, I can use toolboxes and um, take controls and add it to here. I can change the text, this type of an idea. If you right click on the box you can say view code and this would let you actually see the source code and we won't run through it real quick but you can also make edit changes in here and most of the time they'll be reflected back in the designer. Um, there's been some things where they don't like you edit in here but uh, that's up to you. Uh, we'll close that down. Now going back to our solution uh, mockdevice.h is the H file associated with the uh, mock device interface. The mock device interface is the uh, code that you will use to let mock call into your plugin. You will find that you don't have to edit this file or the associated CPP since it is in essence a shim to connect you with your source code that I recommend placing in plugin.h and plugin.cpp. Manage Global is a interesting little file. I'll bring it up. Um, it is not possible to have a uh, global variable uh, declared outside of the scope of a managed uh, function that contains what is called a managed pointer. But I found a way around that by creating a class which I called manage global. It's uh, just a name and by placing what are called static uh, uh, variables inside of that, uh, by the rules of static, they become a global variable that's accessible even without instantiating a copy of the class. Um, just a trick, I'll show you how to use it as we go into the actual code. Uh, let's go back to our list. Plugin.h is the H file for the plugin itself. This uh, design, I've replaced the uh, mock device implementation, as it was called in the SDK, with plugin. So you've got mock device that contains the shim or connecting code, and you've got plugin that contains your code or your implementation. Plugin.h is primarily used to uh, enable or disable the functions that you will be implementing. The template includes all the functions but it's up to you to set the uh, uh, whether or not they're enabled and then the shim will automatically detect that at compile time. Again we'll be going into this line by line in, a few, in one of the future tutorials. 
Uh, continuing down, we have another dialog, just like the config dialog. It is a dialog H that contains all the code for the uh, configuration dialog that you got in got to with plug-in control. You can of course change the heading and change all the text and uh, I was just doing this to uh, standardize and document. Standard AFX everybody should be familiar with. Um, it's the way that the compiler uh, puts all the common headers for Windows and and if you're using MFC the common headers for MFC. Target version I'll spend a second on because I probably won't bother to do it in a separate tutorial it's part of the way that the compilers are, are being done now with a bunch of ifs and this type of an idea. You set in here a magic number which is the version number of Windows 98, uh, Windows XP, and Windows Vista. And by setting those numbers the includes for Win32 uh, and some of the MFCs and other things can say, oh, I'm running on an old operating system or a new operating system. By default, since I believe Mach probably runs best on XP and above, and very few people are running on 98, I set it to be 0501. By uncommenting one of the other lines and commenting this lines, you could uh, change that to require or to assume that this will be running on Vista. Uh, it doesn't actually make it a prerequisite, it more allows access to things, so use change this with caution. Uh, let's see, the other file is a XML net profile. Again, this is a class that's primarily contained within the H that I wrote to replace or, or supplement or uh, bring up to date the XML profile that um, was included with the SDK. We'll cover this in more detail. And then you have the demo dialog which is the uh, dialog box that is being used as a modeless box that uh, we we actually put our data up on the screen. I want to show you one item on this one while we're in here. I think it's down here at the bottom. See this parameter topmost. This is the uh, parameter that by setting it to true, which is not done on a usual basis, the dialog always lives on top of mock and that's how you make it a topmost window. Then um, the actual program, the project, is called XY Tutor and uh, you'll see now why I named it Tutor instead of Demo. I didn't want you to be confused between the XY Tutor and the XY Demo. Um, XYTutor.h is uh, for all practical, well in this case empty, for all practical purposes empty. Um, it is a, uh, in some ways a placeholder this system was designed with the idea of working in MFC and .NET and MFC needs certain things done to start up um, the MFC environment and those are usually put in the main or root or whatever you want to call it source file of your project. What I usually do is make that source file the same name as the project. So I followed that style and created a CPP. Now, in the case of .NET, it doesn't need anything, so it's kind of kind of superfluous, but I left it in to give an identity. Okay, the resource file, one note on that. Uh, as the people watching the uh, notes on the mock support forum have found out, I included this file primarily, whoops, that shows why you can't use it, um, excuse me, I included this file primarily for uh, setting the version of the DLL that's visible when you do a directory of, of the uh, mock plugin area. Uh, I was trying to make it that even in Express you could come down in here and edit it as text because t Express does not include a resource editor and you could come in here and set your company names and versions and things like that. Uh, as people have discovered, it ends up that Express will not even compile this. Uh, my machine will actually compile it because it's accidentally finding some, um, actually this file, AFX Res, that is um, part of my standard 
uh, installation of uh, Visual Studio. I will in the next release probably uh, deprecate this uh, and then try to add it back in a, in a near future release that um, maybe gets around this include or, or something like that. Uh, that covers the H's and the resources. Let's run through the source files real fast. Again, they pretty well match what's what we covered up top, almost in the same order. Um, config dialog, like I told you, is uh, an empty file that just calls in the H. DLL main, if you're running Win32 or .NET, there is some um, DLL magic that has to be done. And so this file has been included. It's a standard file that's used by pretty well all DLL programming in uh, Visual Studio. If you use MFC, this file will not be included in your project, and the uh, main file for your project will include a bunch of uh, MFC code that will be automatically generated for you. Uh, continuing down, we have our mock device CPP. That is the shim, as I call it, that actually exposes our uh, DLL to mock and accepts all the calls from mocks and then passes them on optionally to plug in CPP. We'll bring it up real quick. Um, here, here it is. You should not need to edit this file. Um, so that's one reason, but there's a whole bunch of comments in here that you should read, and it lets you know when you can access the XML and this type of things. Uh, the plugin CPP, as I said, I replaced what was called, let me uh, shrink this properties, I replaced what was called mock device implementation with plugin.cpp. And just like mock device implementation, it's optional you can put all your code right in mock device but it's kind of recommended against so that you can keep it separate and this contains all of your functions now I'll just stop here at the first function in mock device implementation they called it my init control and while I was reworking it, uh, the my just always confused me. Uh, is that mocks my, or is it that, or is that the plugins my? And so I replaced it with pi init control, which really stands for plugin, but it also can easily be said as pi init control. So for every function, um, or for most of the functions that are shimmed over in mock device, there is a corresponding. Uh, Pi version, Pi set pro name, this type of an idea. Going back, uh, again, we're going to go into all these things line by line. Going back, we have the plugin control dialog. Again, it's pretty well empty. Standard AFX is pretty well empty. AXYZ demo dialog is pretty well empty. And on a non MFC, XYZ tutor is pretty well empty. But um, we just left it in to keep the template the same. Uh, then there's a README that frankly isn't up to date. It's the one I think originally generated by the compiler and uh, it's kind of kind of stinks and I'll probably replace it with something in my generation. Anyway, that's a quick run through of all the pieces. You've seen how the actual program operates so that as I get into the detail and talk about making the X drode visible, it will say, ah, that's what he was talking about. And that's going to end this part of the tutorial. Uh, I want to break these tutorials into 10 to 20 minute segments so they download and so you can rerun individual sections easily. So that's the end for section one and we'll go on to section two and start looking at some of the details of these files. Thank you very much.